Hi, Laura here. Before you begin the Silva Intuition Training Program, I'd like to give you some pointers that will help you to make the most of this program. This program, in great part, has to do with enhancing your intuition, but it also has to do with finding your life purpose, your mission in life, and to have a constant connection to source energy. When we talk about intuition, we're talking about a feeling of knowing without the use of rational processes. And it involves a part of the brain that operates very rapidly and creates a balance between our thoughts and our feelings. These pointers I'm going to share with you, I want you to keep in mind as you listen through the program. And after I give you these pointers, I have a real special surprise for you. Pointer number one, bring to mind any intuitive experience that you have had. It could be in the form of maybe hunches or gut feelings, insights, intuitive dreams, anything you can call intuitive or an intuitive experience. We've all had them. We've all had many of these experiences throughout our lifetime. And often it comes in a simple form of when the phone rings, you just know who's on the other side of the line. Or you're thinking about someone and that person happens to appear in your front door. Sometimes you're waiting for the elevator and there could be five or six elevators, but you happen to be standing in front of the one that opens. Anything like that. Anytime that you have sensed information that when you follow through, has led you to a positive outcome, you can call an intuitive experience. Now notice, from this point on, you're also going to be concentrating more on those thoughts, ideas, or hunches, or feelings that come to you to find out where they lead. Because many times, these subtle feelings are the right feelings that are associated to intuitive experiences. Two. Bring to mind childhood memories of what you always love to do and that you still love doing to this day. This could be a great indicator of what really and truly is your life purpose and mission. We all enjoy doing something special. I love to cook. I love to garden. But most of all, I love to talk. So I think a lot of times I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing because not only do I love to talk, but I love to talk about ideas, tools, techniques that can truly make people's lives change for the better. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm doing exactly what I was born to do. What were you born to do? What do you in the heart and core of your very being believe you were born to do, and start putting some thought into that as well. Three, create a clear personal understanding of what source energy means to you. Everybody has their own meaning for source energy. How do you view it? How do you understand it? What does it mean to you, if anything at all? For me, source energy is an inexhaustible source of energy that I can tap into through my meditations or by just desiring to, to access energy for my body, ideas to help me solve problems, creative ways to approach any situation that I may have. So source energy for me not only helps me physically, but also helps me emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. So what does source energy mean to you? Four, be prepared to do a lot of mental work with your mental senses. This is a course in subjective education. This means that you're going to go through extensive exercises, mental exercises that are going to help you to discern the information you sense with your mental senses, and much the way you discern information that you sense with your physical senses. But let's face it, you've had a lifetime of training when it comes to discerning what you sense with your physical senses. And you've never really had any training as to how to discern information 
you sense with your mental senses. So we're going to do a lot of mental work to achieve that outcome, to achieve that goal. Because when you do, you will have then enhance your intuitive ability. Five, establish points of reference with your experience every step of the way. Whether it's how you experience meditations, the depth that you're experiencing, the physical relaxation, mental relaxation, how you experience your images, how the images are attached to feelings. What does deep mean to you or going deeper? What does relax mean to you? This is going to be extremely useful for you as you go through this program. Six, every time you use visualization and or imagination, engage all of your sensing faculties. In other words, be in the experience. Experience it from a holographic perspective, from a three-dimensional point of view. Use your imagery what you feel and hear and taste and smell, all of your mental senses engage them fully and completely in order to maximize your experience. Seven, during your projection exercises, the exercises that you are going to go through where you're going to learn how to interpret what you sense with your mental senses, the part that we call subjective education, notice What is the difference that makes the difference? What is the difference between one experience and the other? Notice the small little things that are different about one experience with the other, one meditation with the other, one projection into a form or a matter form to the other. Because it is in noticing these very subtle distinctions that you are able to develop your intuitive abilities. Eight, lock into the feeling of knowing. Now go back into your personal history of the many times that you have had that feeling of knowing. I know this is right. I know this is correct. I know I'm in the right path. I know this is red. I know this is black. I know this is happy. I know this is sad. I know this is good. I know this is bad. What is that feeling of knowing? feel like to you? How do you recognize that specific feeling that is called knowing, especially knowing that you know? So go into your personal history and bring forth all the different experiences that you have had with that feeling of knowing that you know and lock in that feeling. That's going to come in really handy throughout this program. Nine, make comparisons along the way with your experience. Compare, 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 compare all the time. When we go through the projection exercises, and you'll know what I mean when we get there, compare this with that. Compare light, intensity, color, density, sound, reflection of sound, depth. Whatever it is, when you go through the projection exercises, make constant comparisons with what you are experiencing. This will help you to make distinctions and will enhance your ability to discern the information that you're sensing. It is in projecting your mental senses that you're able to develop your intuitive ability. This is why ESP, extrasensory perception, does not apply to us because it's not an extra sense. Everybody has it. What we are doing is effective sensory projection. And 10, and probably one of the most important points to emphasize, is to bring forth those childlike qualities in you. That part of you that is curious, that loves to explore, that loves to learn, that has fun doing so. Bring back that child you and have that child you present in all the experiences. This will certainly help you make the very most of the Silva Intuition Training Program. I recommend that you listen to the CDs in the order that they come and to 
spend whatever time you need on each CD before moving on to the next one. It's okay for you to listen to the exercises more than once and to go through the projection exercises more than once. But do listen to them in the order that they come. You can take a week, you can take two weeks, you can take whatever time you need to make the most of this experience. Now, I did say I had a special surprise for you. Well, lo and behold, about eight months ago, we sold a building that had housed our headquarters for about the last 20 years, and we purchased a new building, a new location that we now call our headquarters in Laredo, Texas. And when we were moving all of our archives, we found some boxes. In those boxes were a collection of some television shows that my father and I did back about 20 years ago. Now, mind you, we don't have a lot of audio recordings of my father, much less video recordings of my father. And we really had thought we had lost these and we hadn't located them in so, so, so many years. So you can imagine our great excitement when we found this box of eight millimeter videotape that we then converted into DVDs, and we have sound quality as well. And so today, I'm going to have you listen to some of my father's teachings, ideas, and concepts about the civil method, and most of all, about intuition. So I hope you really enjoy this as much as I have. Every time I hear it, I learn so much, and I'm hoping that you will too. So, let me introduce to you Jose Silva. Before our research, they used to consider only three different minds existing. The uh, consciousness, subconsciousness, and unconsciousness. Now, we come across the need to create a new term, inner consciousness. Well, we were not uh, able then, before we came on the scene, to be able to function consciously within the subconscious. But as soon as we learn to function consciously within that dimension, it's contradictory to say, I'm functioning consciously in the subconscious, below the threshold of consciousness. Then we need to, need to change it to inner consciousness and outer consciousness. So now we can say that in functioning in the world of the mind, we're functioning in the inner consciousness. Functioning in the world of the body, we're functioning in the outer consciousness. You see, we could do our thinking and visualizing and imagining in the outer conscious levels. But the information that we're going to use to imagine with or visualize will be only the information perceived through the biological senses, the so-called physical senses. Then we start using the inner consciousness to visualize and imagine. Now here not only do we have the same information that we have perceived through the biological senses, but we have another set of senses that belong strictly to the mind, and they sense through intuition, through visualization and imagination. So now we are now learning to imagine and visualize in the inner conscious level. To begin with, a person who has learned to use the inner conscious level, we call them centered people, will not get sick with psychosomatic health problems, as to begin with. Now notice the persons who learn to use and only use the outer conscious levels. They're exposed to developing psychosomatic health problems. And medical science is saying that more than 90% of all health problems are psychosomatic. You can imagine the advantage of a centered person being cleared of all psychosomatic health problems because they have learned to function in the inner conscious level. Now a centered person not only is healthier, but also safer from accidents, meaning because of intuition, that person is highly intuitive to be able to select the right path at the right time to move so as not to get hurt. This is the mental sensing faculties. Uh, Dr. Ryan used to call it extrasensory perception. Well, we call it enhanced intuition. So then a person not only is healthier because clear of all psychosomatic health problems, but also safer from accidents. A center person rarely gets into accidents. Why do we have so many accidents? Because 90% are not centered. Now, not only this again, a center person is more successful in life 
because of being able to use the intuitive factor successfully. Meaning, a center person is more times right than wrong. And good luck comes to a person who doesn't make so many mistakes. 10% of humanity are lucky in due respect. They're using the brain correctly. And these are the most successful. Among these people are the geniuses, the inventors, highly successful individuals in the world, the great musicians and writers, depending on what they're able to do. Now, notice, remember that, uh, also keep in mind that everybody on the average enters that dimension approximately 30 times per minute, in and out. But the amount of time that they stay at that dimension can be measured in microseconds. So let's say that in a minute, if we accumulate those microseconds, add them up, we find that they may have been in the right dimension to do all of these things, maybe five seconds out of uh, 60. Well, this is on the average, everybody does this. This is why sometimes they have this flash of insight and uh, this intuitive feelings and so forth, God feelings like you say, is when they have ventured here and stayed in longer than the average. Average about five seconds out of 60. Now what we're doing with training is being able to stay there 50 seconds of the minute or 55 or the 60 seconds of every minute to be able to control that faculty to function in that capacity whenever you need to or want to. This is what we call dynamic meditation as compared to all the others that use uh, passive meditation like uh, yogis in yoga and Zen, transcendental meditation, uh, hypnosis and uh, all of these different disciplines. They all look for the deepest level of mind. There they cannot function actively. They need to know what they want first before they get into the level and then go to this dimension and stay there very passively with no interruption, no noises, no nothing because anybody interrupting their state of mind, they come out immediately, get out of the level. So they're waiting to see what comes to them in relation to what they thought of before they entered the dimension. But they need to be there very passively to see if it comes to them. We don't wait for it to come. We get to this 10th cycle dimension, not the deepest 5 cycle dimension, and we activate our mind to look for the information. If, we, if it doesn't come, we look for it. We know that we need to slow down the brain waves to the rate of vibration that existed when you were about 10 years of age, which means about 10 cycles of brain frequency. It's related. So now, a child, for instance, in the second anabolic cycle of life, we're supposed to grow through, develop through seven anabolic cycles, which is 49, to find the peak of life. Then from there, we have, we go through seven, or should go through seven catabolic cycles. Meaning, at the end of each one cycle, if you have more than what you had in the previous one, it's an anabolic cycle. But if you have, at the end of a cycle, less than what you had in the previous one, it's called a catabolic cycle. So we should find the peak of life, seven times seven multiplied 49. This is why span of life, medical sciences say, some people die very young, some people die older. The average lifespan, according to the medical people that they have helped to expand, is male 74, female 76. Not 98, what it should be. The normal span of life should be 98. Twice, seven times seven. 49, twice over is 98. And we should die, not because a disease kills us, once all disease situations have been resolved, no more illnesses to hurt the body and strong, keep a strong immune system, then your average lifespan would be 98 instead of 74, 76. And we're supposed to die in perfect health, meaning disease should not kill us, which is go to sleep, close our eyes, and take off. Now, we know that the child, for instance, is centered while going through the second anabolic cycle, where mind, human mind, and human intelligence develops its faculty of analyzing the critical consciousness, the deductive faculty of mind, it is said, comes into play, into being, into existence in that human being. So here and now we know that by teaching the child how to visualize and imagine, he's going to establish points of reference, having experiences of how to do it, visualizing and imagining. But Papa and Mama did not know that they had to teach the child how to use his mind 
Papa and Mama only taught to use our tools to eat and be clean and dress ourselves and take care of ourselves, but never did they teach us how to use our mind, which is the most important thing to teach a child, how to use your mind, first of all, before anything else, especially between 7 and 14 years of age, to be able to make connection and establish a good point of reference. When that happens, the child will never forget that. So what do we do with mature adults? We need to slow down their brain waves. How do we slow down their brain waves? Well, we knew from the very beginning that focusing on the sense of sight will keep you on 20 vibrations brain activity. It's the only biological sense that requires 20 vibrations. It's the focusing faculty of the eyes. So if we keep our eyes focusing, you will never get to any lower brain frequency because you get stuck on 20. So we have to have the eyes closed. Yogis need to have their eyes closed. Zen meditators have eyes closed. Transcendental meditators, eyes closed. In hypnosis, eyes closed. People with discipline in the mind. So we needed to keep our eyes closed to begin with. To be able to get away from 20, to go to a lower brain frequency. Then we knew that mental activity and physical activity is interrupting the state of relaxation. We need to relax in order to get the brain to slow down. So we need to develop mental relaxation and physical relaxation so that this particular uh, situation will not disturb or interrupt our relaxation means. We need to relax as deep as we could to slow down the brain waves to get to the level of brain activity that you had when you were a child, like between 7 and 14 years of age, for instance. Then we start developing activity here to learn to visualize and imagine that we should have done, or Papa should have done, or Mama should have done with us, when we were passing through the ages of 7 14, and never to forget it. Now, this is what our training does then. It's load other brain waves and start using visualization and imagination in order to accomplish this. But people do not know what visualization and imagination is. And for Papa and Mama to teach a child how to visualize, they need to know what that is. Well, visualizing is remembering what we have seen. We see with our biological eyes and we visualize with our mind. Which means you go over that impression retained in your brain of what you have seen. Now, going over those impressions is visualizing. It's not going over the memories of what you heard or smelled or tasted and so on. That's remembering. But remembering what you have seen is visualizing. Because you're going over an image impressed in your brain and describing it, if you want to, mentally or verbally, in full detail and color. That's visualizing. So now, we can tell this child, if the child is aged between 7 and 14, Sonny, come here, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you with your eyes closed. Close your eyes because his eyes open will bring him up to 20. His eyes closed will be according to his age, maybe between 7 and 14, depending on what age he is at the time. So they will say, Sonny or daughter, close your eyes. I want to talk to you. Now tell me about some friends of yours. For instance, do you remember your Uncle John? Yes. Can you tell me what color of hair he has? He'll tell you. Color of eyes. Let him to recall this. He's describing in full detail, in, in color, everything about his Uncle John. Get him to remember things he has seen, or the, the child has seen, little girl, the boy, whatever, and to describe them to you with their eyes closed. That's practicing visualization. That's an experience that the child is going through. And he will never forget from there on. So you need to do this ever so often between 7 and 14 years of age. The dreams also, because of visualizing, a dream could be a mental creation of something. You can create something in your mind. When you create it, you're using imagination. But once you develop the image that you have created, when you go over it again, you're visualizing your own creation. The impression once in the brain, regardless of how it's perceived, whether through mental sensing or biological sensing, if it's there and you're going over it, that's visualizing. So visualizing means detection of the created information, detection of something that has already been created. Somebody will transmit a thought to you. If you're able to detect that thought, the first person created it and you detected it. So you detect it through visualization also in the world of the mind dimension. Now in the world of physics, you see something, you remember it, you describe it, and you're visualizing what you have seen physically. So you can visualize you can use faculty of visualization to go over what you have seen or to detect information, new information that others have created at the mental level.
the imagination is a little different. You can also tell your child or help your child develop it. And it must be done between 7 and 14 years of age. Ever so often you practice these exercises. Mental gymnastics sometimes is called mental training exercises for imagination. Imagination is create something from nothing. You are the creator. This is the creative dimension. This is the beginning of everything. Inventors start first in this dimension. Once they have created it mentally, then they go out to manifest in the physical dimension. Materialize it. You see, remember this now, that the past is composed of materialized thoughts. The present is a process of materializing thoughts. And the future is composed of conceived thoughts not yet materialized. Now from this dimension, we can become aware if we need to, because there's a problem to be solved, to be able to be aware of what has been impressed, materialized, or what is being impressed, being materialized, or what will be impressed if their thoughts are materialized, the conceived thoughts are materialized. And this is what's called wise men and prophets. A wise person is able to get information from within and be correct without being told. A prophet is one who detects the thoughts already imagined, not yet materialized, and when materialized, the person can say, these thoughts, if they all become materialized, this and this and this will happen. Well, that's prophetic information. It's the same thing here. Now, to teach a child how to develop imagination, Sonny, our daughter, come here, I want to talk to you. Eyes closed, remember? Because we need to get away from where the eyes are focusing, because focusing of the eyes keeps the brain at 20 vibrations. So we need to close our eyes, then the brain will slow down to, according to the age of the child, between 7 and 14. So then here, for imagination, we say, Sonny, or whatever, you're working with your son or daughter, uh, your Aunt Martha is coming uh, home to visit with us next month. Could you tell me what your Aunt Martha looks like? The child might say, well, how can I? I never seen her. I said, okay, let's play a guessing game. Now, that's the thing right there. Play guessing game with the child between 7 and 14. Guess, what color of hair does your Aunt Martha have? Then tell you with the eyes closed. Put it down. What color of eyes? Put it down. How is she going to be dressed? Would she wear a hat? What color of hat? Dress, shoes, and so on. Let him tell you. Put it down. Before you know it, you practice like so. Before you know it, the child is going to be right in every detail, even though Aunt Martha did not know what she's going to wear when coming to visit with you. The intuitive factor can be enhanced with imagination. The enhancement of, of intelligence, enhancement of the IQ factor. The enhancement of intuition, enhancement of the psi factor. Hearing my father speak reminds me of childhood memories when he would have myself and my other sisters close our eyes and imagine things to come or close our eyes and visualize things that we had already experienced. I didn't realize what he was actually doing at the time and how much he was helping us to develop our imagination and visualization and our creativity and problem-solving abilities. I have great memories of the card games we used to play during our road trips, and they involved using Bruno First's memory pig system, which is a memory pig system that everyone who goes to the civil life system, live presentations learn. And it involves visualization and imagination and a system of memory or mnemonics. And my father used to have my sister and I compete as to who could remember the main topic on every page in a magazine. And then he would say, page number 123, and we'd shout out what was on page 123. Page 36, and we'd shout out, and we would compete with each other using this memory peg system. And some of my fondest, fondest memories are of when we used to get together after lunch on Sunday afternoons. And my brothers and sisters and other family members would come together and some friends as well. And we would practice hypnosis. My father would have us go through positive, negative hallucinations, or we would go through age regressions or age progressions. And little did I know at that time, because I was so young, that he was doing research, and that that research would lead to one of the most amazing courses in mind and personal development to date, the Silva Method. And I think about that, and I say, wow, he really was a man way ahead of his time.
Well, there you have it. I'm sure you picked up a few little jewels there, and the good thing is that we're still looking through all these boxes full of these videotapes, so as I find things that I think that you're going to enjoy, I'll be sharing them with you along the way, not only in this program, but in programs to come. Recently, I ran into a really dear friend of ours, of the family of my father, Jose Luis Romero, and I was talking to him about the Silva Intuition Training, and he had so many great stories to share that I asked him to share them with you. I think you're going to gain a lot of applications and insights with what he's going to share, and I believe it's a good way to start thinking about the value of intuition and the role it plays in every one of our lives. Here's Pepe, as we like to call him. Thank you, Laura. Jose Silva believed that everyone should learn and develop their intuitive ability to make more right decisions and thus live a happier, healthier, more successful life. I have been very fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with Jose Silva for over 28 years, and during that time, I learned his method and I practiced and applied his techniques. I used them in everyday life and they helped me to make more right decisions than wrong, and thus helped me to live a happier, healthier, more successful life. During my time in Silva, I found that many people have questions concerning intuition. Some of the most common questions are, What is intuition? How do I know that I have intuition? How do I develop it? What can I do with it? Maybe one day... The scientific proof as to what intuition is may very well be found in quantum physics. In Silva, however, you will find much information, theory, and research to support the theory to show that intuition is possible. However, it is not necessary to know the reasoning that makes intuition possible for you to be able to use it. So, what is intuition? Intuition is your ability to use your mind to detect information, information that you can use to solve problems and to make decisions. Think for a moment. Have you ever experienced intuition? Have you ever had a hunch? A gut feeling? A very strong feeling that something needs to be done? If you have, then this may very well be your intuition. Or let's think now about this. Have you ever had a situation when you're busy doing something and out of the deep blue sky you get a thought or an image of someone you know but have not seen for a while and had no reason to think of this person? And then, a short time later, you are contacted by this person, whether by phone, mail, email, or in person. Is it a coincidence that you had a thought of this person and then you are contacted? Or could this be that you intuitively sense this person was thinking about you? Chances are that your mind tuned into this person while they had in their mind a thought about you. This is an intuitive experience for you. You may also experience intuition with a person you are very close to, and you seem to tune in to each other frequently and to the same ideas and information. Many times, you are able to sense information and feelings intuitively with this person. At times, a question may be answered by the other person before the question is asked. These are instances of intuition. Have you ever heard of motherly intuition? This is when your mother knows things about you that you have not told her about. Or for example, my mother and I were very much in tune and she would communicate with me mentally. There would be times when I would be busy at work, and out of nowhere I would get a thought of my mother, or an image of my mother. So I would call her, and she would immediately say, when she answered the telephone, I knew it was you. I sent you a telepathic message because I did not want to call you in case you were busy at work. But I'm making enchiladas, and I know that you like them so much that I would like to invite you for lunch. And she did make the best enchiladas with all the fresh ingredients. And she would go to the store and pick the red peppers herself. 
to make the chili sauce because they had to be of a certain quality. Well, so much for enchiladas. These are some examples of intuition. Take a moment and think of an occasion when you may have had an intuitive experience. Something that you could confirm. Once you have had this type of experience, then it becomes a knowing to you. A knowing is something that you know you can do because you have done it before. You may be provided with all the scientific information on how something works, and you may be told that so many others can do it, but unless you have done it at least once, it will not be a knowing to you. One of the most challenging things is to know when you are receiving an intuitive thought. Any time you can confirm intuitive thoughts, you will become more confident with your intuition. For example, for me, when my mother would tell me that she contacted me telepathically, reconfirmed my confidence. So we say that intuition is your ability to detect information with your mind from your family, your friends, your associates, or from wherever necessary to help improve your decision-making that will help you make better decisions in your health, relationships, and your business or profession. Another common question that people ask is, how do you know that you have intuition? Once you complete the training and learn to enter deep levels of mind, your intuitive mind will be enhanced, more so if you attend a live presentation. In a live presentation, you will receive positive feedback in the casework section, and you will know that it works for you. However, every one of you will develop at your own pace, depending on your belief factor, your desire to learn and to use what you learn, and your faith in the system. Every one of you has the ability to develop your ESP with training and practice. Just like you can develop your physical body with exercise, you can train your brain to project the mind. If I asked how many of you can run a mile, chances are that many of you are not able to do it at this time. However, if you started a training program, in time, most of you would be able to run a mile and faster and faster with continued practice. Each one of you would develop at your own pace, however. It is never too late to learn. I once heard a story of a man who had never been in a running program. But when he retired at the age of 65, he decided to start running to improve his health. This man, at the age of 81, ran his first full marathon, which is about 26 miles. So you see, it is never too late to learn. You all have the ability to detect information with your subjective senses. Once you have completed your training, look for coincidences to confirm your intuition. But also, take an active part in creating things as soon as possible. For example, when I was attending the Silva training, and we had just started the ESP section, and in those days in Laredo, the class was held in the evenings from 7 to 11. One day, after class ended, at approximately 11 p.m., I went home and arrived close to midnight, and my parents were not there. My parents would never go out this late during the week, but I knew that my sister had just bought a home, and they probably were helping her to move. I became concerned when they did not arrive by 1 a.m., because they needed to be home to be able to go to work in the morning. I did not know my sister's new phone number, and there were no cell phones back then. So I said to myself, I'm taking this ESP course. Let me see if it works. I went to my level, and I imagined calling my mother. Mentally, I said, Mom, please call me. Well, in no time, the phone rang, and it was my mother who said, Pepe, I was asleep, and I clearly heard you say, Mom, Mom, and I woke up and thought you might be worried. We decided to stay at your sister's house since we finished too late. For me, this experience changed my life, and I started to use ESP in so many ways that I don't have enough time in this recording to cover them all. So practice and be confident, and use your ESP. The more you practice and the more you use it, the more confident you get, and the easier it becomes for you. Thanks, Pepe.
So let's get ready to learn the Silver Intuition Training Program. This program is going to be in three parts. The first part has to do with establishing your constant connection with source energy and also to begin to sense your mission and purpose in life. The second part has to do with establishing subjective points of reference through all the projection exercises. And the third part has to do with actually applying these points of reference in actual case studies. The one thing I want you to focus on along the way are some very valuable statements called effective sensory projection statements for success. And they go like this. I am now able to attune my intelligence by developing my sensing faculties, and to experience myself as any point, place, level, or depth, so as to be aware of any actions taking place. I am now able to function in non-locality regarding time and space. I am aware that intelligence exists at all levels and depths in the universe, and therefore, I can attune to all information. I am now able to use my sensing faculties and to experience myself as any matter kingdom, mineral, plant, animal, and human, if this is what I desire to do. I am now able to detect abnormalities whenever such abnormalities exist within any kingdom any level, any depth. I am now able to apply corrective measures and to bring back to normalcy any abnormality found within any kingdom, any level, and any depth. Quantum energy is available at any level to be acted upon to create through the subjective and objective dimensions. These statements are at the very heart and soul of the Silva Method Training, of the Silva Intuition Training Program, because they demonstrate our ability to project our mental senses wherever we need to project them to gather information that we can apply towards solving problems of all kinds. So keep them in mind throughout the program. Enjoy! To guarantee success with your Silva techniques, we recommend that you take the Silva Seminars live. For more information over course schedules and locations, log on to silvamethod.com or call 1-800-545-6463 within the continental United States or 956-722-6391. Welcome to the Silva Intuition Training Program, where you are going to learn how to use your ESP reliably and regularly to help you make better decisions in all areas of your life. 
and to obtain guidance and help from Source Energy so that you can fulfill your mission in life. Hi, I'm Laura Silva Quesada, and I'll be guiding you through the Silva Intuition Training Program. The Silva Intuition Training Program is my favorite. I have to say that this is the program that is filled with tools and techniques and exercises that will show you how to learn how you sense information and how to interpret the information you sense so that you can apply it to solving problems of all kinds towards making your life better and better through time. Many of you already know me. I know that my life wasn't always picture perfect. I had a lot of challenges. I had health issues and financial problems, and, and I had challenges with relationships as well. And it wasn't until I returned to the Silva Method and practiced the techniques that I learned in the Silva Life System that my life started to turn around for the better. But it was when I got into the Silva Intuition Training exercises that a whole new doorway opened up for me. I remembered what it was like to be able to be on track, to be able to feel confident about the choices and decisions that I made. I learned how to use my inner guidance, my inner voice to make better choices and decisions, to follow through on ideas and make good things happen because of those ideas, and to create the life of my own design. In the Silva Intuition Training, I learned how not only to sense information beyond the barriers of time and space, but I learned how to interpret that information and be able to apply it to solving all problems, any, any problem that came my way. This is one of the reasons why my father called this part of the Silva Method the heart and soul of the Silva Method because it is in the Silva Intuition Training exercises that you will learn how to live your life as a dualistic being that you are in both the objective dimension and the subjective dimension. You will be able to gather information through your physical senses, real factual concrete information that can be applied towards problem solving. And you'll also be able to gather information with your mental senses, your mental senses that are not bound to time or space. You can go into the past and gather information, go into the future and be able to apply or imagine this information being utilized in very positive ways that can change your life forever for the better. You can go into the microcosm and gain information or go out to the macrocosm and experience this information as well. You have no boundaries with your subjective senses. And this is the reason why my father called this subjective education. By living in this way, you will be able to create the life of your own design. I'm thrilled to be able to guide you through this process, along with many of my colleagues like Ken Kasha, Dr. Tony Estrada, and Dr. Joe McGillicuddy. And together, we want to bring to you an experience that will be life-changing, an experience that will allow you to live life with confidence and as a problem-solving being, contributing your part in turning this planet into a paradise. But you always must start with a person you see in the mirror. By starting with changing your life for the better, the life of those who are closest to you will also change for the better. Let's face it, the way our planet is today it's obvious that all of us have got to pull together to make the most of what is to come, to contribute our part in making the most wonderful things happen in our planet today. And when we share this information with those who are closest to us, by example alone sometimes, then we are already contributing to a more positive outcome. As I said, my father called 
this part of the Silva Method, the heart and soul of the Silva Method. And he wanted to share this with everyone. That is why the Silva Method has the motto of serving humanity better. And he always realized that we had to start with ourselves because that's the best way that we can help others. And he did that himself. And later, he started with those he loved the most and were closest to him, his family. My father, back in the 40s, began his research in psychology, behaviorism, hypnosis, yoga, and he became quite a master hypnotist himself. He believed early on that if he could share what he learned in hypnosis with his children, he could help them do better in school and therefore make better grades in their test. And by doing that, he felt that this could give them an opportunity to do better in life. He worked mostly with my older brothers and sisters utilizing hypnosis in learning their lessons from school. And when they began to do better in school, other family members wanted their children to learn the very same technique so that they too could do better in school. Well, by the time you knew it, the word spread, and now neighbors and friends were bringing their children to also learn these tools and techniques to do better in school, and they did. Within a short period of time, people were gathering, parents and children alike, to learn these tools that he was sharing, tools that were grounded in hypnosis that through time began to evolve into what we now have today as the Silva Method. Father's focus shifted somewhere down the line while working with my sister Isabel, who is a retired nurse anesthetist today and is also a phenomenal medical intuitive. But when Isabel was young and my father worked with her, he found that she was beginning to answer a lot of the questions right before he asked them. He had not yet asked the question, but yet Isabel was providing him with answers. And he began to see that happening not just with Isabel, but with my other brothers and sisters or other children he was working with. In fact, he saw that to be something that most everyone he was working with were doing or exhibiting. And he thought, isn't that interesting? There seems to be an intuitive factor that is being enhanced or evolved by simply practicing with hypnosis in this way. So he began to develop the process that now is a Silva method of teaching a person self-controls while entering in this internal state, a sort of self-hypnosis, if you will, that later on, as it continued to evolve, became the Silva method. He also, along the way, learned that it was important to go in and out of this meditative level, which at that point didn't know that it was alpha. There was no equipment back in the 40s and early 50s to measure brainwave frequency that was readily available to people. So by the time my father had access to an electroencephalograph to measure brainwave frequencies, it was much, much later, more like in the 60s and going into the 70s. But at any rate, back then he realized a person could learn to enter this internal state on their own. They didn't need a hypnotist to guide them along the process. But his goal was always to enhance the intuitive factor. The second part of the slow method has to do with evolving the intuitive factor. And the process is very unique. And it is a process that we're going to share with you during this program. I believe that you will learn how to enhance your intuition and be able to apply this intuitive ability every day in every way. Many people go through this process and they become very keen intuitives. And others will go through the process with a feeling that they know that they are right when they make choices and decisions. A feeling that they know they know. And if at the very least you end up at the end of this training program with that feeling, then I have accomplished my job. I have met my goal because what is most important is for you to have a feeling of confidence when you make choices and decisions, to have a feeling of knowing that you're doing the right thing for you, your family members, and your loved ones, and to be able 
to apply information that you gather beyond the boundaries of time and space in a way that you can solve problems of all kinds, truly creating the life of your design. As I mentioned earlier, Ken Kasha is going to be joining me throughout this program. Ken is a Silva instructor and international director for instructor training. And he's a friend to the Silva Method and a very dear friend of mine as well. He's been with the Silva Method for close to 40 years now. And he's done his part to spread the Silva Method worldwide. Here's Ken. Thank you, Laura, for your kind words of introduction. And thank you for taking the time to listen to our program, and for making the investment to be here with us at this time. It really is a privilege and an honor to serve you. You're about to embark on a journey, the journey that will last your lifetime as you begin to explore your subjective mind, your intuition, and make discoveries along the way that will empower you to help us create a better world for those who follow. For this is our mission statement. We're enriching the planet by empowering the individual. In our time together, we have three primary goals in the Silver Intuition Training. Number one, we're interested in helping you to be more on purpose in your life, to enjoy a purpose-driven life. Lately, we hear reports of people hating their work, having anxiety attacks the evening before. We hear of epidemic levels of depression and stress. We hear of people feeling unappreciated and too many demands and over-demanding clients and co-workers and family members. Well, in my opinion, I think that part of this epidemic lies in people getting stuck in selective memory of focusing on those aspects, those things about their life that they don't enjoy. So part of our mission is to help you awaken from within a deep sense of purpose in your life. For you know, we all make a difference. We all have a part. We're all here together, like on one big boat, each of us at our own oar, moving along this river of life. Second, during the intuition training, there'll be exercises to help us establish and sustain the connection that we believe is there already to source energy. And third, our mission is to enhance, further awaken, I should say, and enhance intuition. For we've always believed that each and every human being has intuitive capability. Imagine the possibilities. In fact, what for you would be important? Consider some of the problems you face. Some of the roadblocks. You know, things are not always what they appear to be. And too often we don't have all the information we need to solve some of our problems. Too often we have insights, ideas, and then our well-meaning friends talk us out of them. <laughs> or worse, we talk ourselves out for lack of conviction, or lack of courage, or confidence to follow through on those ideas. Often we wonder, I'm having an intuitive insight. Yeah, but is it really? Or is it just wishful thinking? You know, many people run to the casinos these days. Oh yeah, this is my lucky day. Only to find that it was surely wishful thinking. And likewise, we live in a society that lately seems to be driven by fear. The expression that I hear used is fear-mongering. And you know, when we're in fear, we don't think clearly. We don't come from our heart. We don't make good decisions and choices. So it's essential that we remove any obstacles to clearly defining, understanding our intuitive capability. We've got to build that trust muscle. Let me give you a quick, simple example. You may even remember this. Because back here in the United States to the time when Richard Nixon was then president of the U.S. And this is just prior to his visit to China. Well, during that period of time, as the story goes, 
a young businessman, an entrepreneur, was literally in the shower when he had a flash of insight, you might say an intuitive insight, about a business opportunity. The idea was to market pandas, stuffed pandas. So he presented this to his advisors, and immediately they laughed and said, oh, it might be a cute animal, I don't know that I even know what it is, but you know, the teddy bear has a corner on the market. It doesn't seem like a wise investment. Well, he didn't listen. He was so convinced of this feeling he had, this idea, he followed through. He put all of his savings in and he began to manufacture stuffed pandas. And lo and behold, President Nixon made his first trip to China, built some bridges with the Chinese ambassadors and the Chinese culture, and literally almost overnight there was an explosion of interest in pandas which is, of course, as you may know, the national animal of China. That business became almost overnight a multi-million dollar business, that one idea. Scientists, medical researchers, biologists throughout history have often had ideas, insights, and dreams. August Kekuli, the famous biochemist, had a dream. He saw a snake it appeared like a light chasing its tail. That sparked an idea that led him to the development of the theory of the benzene ring. Niels Bohr, similarly, in his development of the one-time theory of the atomic structure, through a dream, through creative insights, now accepted as fact, by the way. And on and on the list goes, in the arts, in the sciences, in sports arenas, in everyday business, in understanding each other better. I'm really excited about this topic, for we began with the Silver Life System, a very practical, hands-on program for self-development, for overcoming fear, for developing confidence, for personal and professional development, for self-improvement in just about any area of your life. And now we're moving into part two, the intuition training, where we're going to take a much deeper, closer look at those subjective qualities that are our own God-given gift each of us possesses. Call it what you will. The fact remains that we are more than what we appear to be. And you know, it all began way back in 1944 with an act of love. Jose Silva, a man who I have been so, so honored and privileged to have known, to have worked so closely. He was my mentor. I like to consider him a friend, and as you know, he passed away in the late 1990s. He began with an act of love to help his children improve learning capabilities. As he began to research, as he began to look at various modalities from biofeedback, positive thinking, hypnosis, meditation, he began to think and realize, I must be on to something of far more value than just improving memory. And when you look closely at our history and the development of the Silver Method, it is full of some very fascinating stories, seeming coincidences, moments of synchronicity that go beyond logic, that led to the development and refinement and expansion where now, since 1971, we went from maybe 5,000 graduates worldwide to millions of people. We're in over 110, maybe 20 different nations. I've lost count. And when you explore some of the world's leaders in this field of personal development and spiritual development, we'll credit Jose Silva for laying a foundation, an all-important foundation for them. So get ready. Thank you, Kenny. The Silva method has always been a method that has been rooted in scientific research especially the part that we refer to as civil life system, has a lot of science to back it up. We know that by taking the civil life system home study program, we know that you're able to manage stress effectively, that you're able to relax at will, that you can strengthen your immune system, you're able to become more creative, that you can be able to develop your visualization and your imagination as well that you learn to study more effectively, that you can improve the state of your health and manage pain and take away discomfort. There's so much that we know for a fact that science can validate. 
The part I'm talking about here is this part in the civil intuition training. In the civil intuition training, we may not be able to prove scientifically what one experiences as they go through the process of subjective education, as you go through the process of enhancing your intuition and actually be able to become more intuitive. Now, there's a lot that we can prove. And a lot of what is subjective and spiritual, we cannot. There are no instrumentations to prove the subjective or spiritual experience per se. Now, you can show on a brain scan how the brain is responding or reacting to your experience of spirituality or to your subjective experience. But what actually is the wealth and the depth of your subjective spiritual experience cannot ever, ever be proven, shown, or described or validated through science. The technology just doesn't exist. But it doesn't mean that it's not a scientific process altogether. Ken Wilber, one of the greatest thinkers of our age, says that there are three wings of science, that science is a very specific kind of interpretive process, and there are three very famous schools of epistemology, all of which have tried to claim that they have got it covered, and all of which are talking about some very important parts. And these are the parts. The first part, or the first wing of science, is that there must be an injunction. And an injunction is always in the form of something like this. If you want to know this, then you must do that. For example, Ken Wilber goes on to say, If you want to know if it's raining outside, then go to the window and look outside. The second wing or part is an experience, an illumination, the data that is gathered from that experience, an experience that shows up when you follow the injunction. If you don't follow the injunction, then you don't have the experience. And the third wing, the third part, is some form of confirmation. Ken Wilber says that the most clever version of confirmation is called poppers, or falsifiability. In other words, a hypothesis isn't scientific unless you can falsify it. It would be like me getting this information, then asking you, well, what did you get? And getting your input on that experience as well. Wilbur says that this can be applied to anything, even Hamlet. For example, you first have to read Hamlet. That's the injunction. Once you read Hamlet, Then you go to step two or part two, which is the experience or the illumination that you gather, the data. And the third is that there may be many interpretations of Hamlet, but there are a million things that Hamlet is not. And so you check with someone else about how to interpret it. Meditation, the experience that you are going to have in the Silver Intuition Training, falls in what is known as broad science because it very specifically fits exactly the definition of an injunction. You're going to have to go through the process. And then once you do go through the process, then you go through an illumination. You gather information, data, and then you're going to check it with the community of the adequate, as Ken Wilber says, That means those are people who have gone through step one and step two, have gone through the injunction and have actually gathered data themselves. And step three is to compare notes. The civil life system falls more in what is referred to as narrow science. That kind of science is conducted by people who say that we're only going to apply those three strands to something that I can see with my senses and test. Whereas civil intuition training, falls mostly in broad or deep science. That's a kind of science that still follows those three strands, those three parts, and shows us the interior. And although they are interrelated, they are different. Every exterior has an interior event. Although we can't prove a lot of what we make claims to in the Silver Intuition Training, it still falls within the broad band of science. 
and you are going to be the scientist when it comes to your experience. In a moment, we're going to be doing the long relax exercise. And the long relax exercise lasts about 30 minutes. So you need to make sure that you're comfortable and ready for the exercise because it is a a little bit lengthy. The exercise will follow the usual format that we utilize for all exercises. And that is step one, to enter the exercise. And we have discussed before in uh, the Civil Life System Home Study course that there's many ways of entering an exercise from just closing your eyes to defocusing your vision to doing a more structured entry like a three-to-one method. We're going to be utilizing the three-to-one method, which is taking three separate breaths. The first breath is to exhale and visualize the number three three times. And number three will always be a point of reference for physical relaxation. At that point, we're going to do a part-by-part body relaxation where you are going to concentrate and focus your awareness on different parts of your body, starting from the head or the scalp all the way down to the feet. Now, when I say concentrate your awareness on, let's say your scalp, the skin that covers your head, then put all your attention and focus to just the scalp. And then I'll say, you may feel a tingling sensation, a vibration, simply because you're alive or because of circulation. So again, focus. The whole idea is for you to train yourself to focus on different parts of your body at a time. That's mental discipline. That's also going to help for mind-body management as we go through the exercises. But to focus and concentrate your sense of awareness on a specific area also helps you to deepen and to relax that part of the body. So what we're going to do is a part-by-part body relaxation. First the scalp, then the forehead, then the eyelids and the tissue surrounding the eyes, the skin covering the cheeks, the throat, and then the chest area and the abdomen all the way down to the feet. When we get to the shoulders, arms, and hands, or then later the chest and the abdomen, I'm going to ask you to feel the clothing in contact with that part of your body. And then I'm also going to ask you to feel the skin and the vibration of the skin covering those parts of your body. And in addition, I'm going to ask you to concentrate within the body itself. And I'm going to ask you to cause every cell, tissue, gland, and organ to function in a normal, rhythmic, healthy manner. You need to use your imagination. If you have any health challenge with any organ, any gland, any part of your body internally or externally, then concentrate on that part and imagine it returning to perfect health, functioning in a normal, healthy, rhythmic manner. Once we get to the feet, we're going to go then through a process of desensitization. You're going to imagine like your feet, ankles, calves, knees, Thighs, waist, shoulders, arms, and hands do not feel as though they belong to your body. Now, you're in charge of the exercise. You use your imagination to do this. Again, it's about disciplining your mind to do what you want it to do. And that is one of the reasons why my father called it mind control, the Silva method of mind control. He meant self-mind control, where you control your mind in a way that will give you the kind of benefits that you desire in your living experience. So once you desensitize the different parts of your body, you feel your awareness, your existence. And that's what we want you to experience, that kind of depth that is associated with just experiencing your beingness, your existence. Once we do physical relaxation, it's important for you to make a point of reference of how your body, brain, and mind experience it and memorize that experience, memorize that feeling of deep physical relaxation and how it's associated to the number three because you want to repeat that experience over and over and over again in future exercises and you want to be able to enhance the experience. So from now on, number three, as you enter an exercise, will always represent physical relaxation. Through time, the process will shorten. 
In this exercise, it will be a lengthy process, but it will get shorter and shorter through time. You will then take another deep breath, and as you exhale, you will repeat the number two several times. Now, from now on, the number two, as you enter an exercise, will always represent mental relaxation. To relax your mind, all you need to do is think of tranquil and passive scenes. Very simple. Not only are you going to think, and I'll guide you through the process, of several tranquil and passive scenes, but you're also going to experience it fully and completely as if you're in the experience from a holographic perspective, like in a three-dimensional perspective, incorporating all of your mental senses fully and completely. I'll allow you plenty of time to experience each of the scenes that I'm going to guide you through. At the end of that, then you will take a third deep breath, and as you exhale, you will mentally repeat and visualize the number one several times. Now, at that point, you find yourself to be at what we call the basic plane level. That means wherever your body or your brain is at that point in time, when we say one, 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 as you excel, that is your basic plane level. Now, it's really simple to get into a meditative state. It's simple to get into alpha. And we may not always know exactly what frequency you are in, but that's not even important. What's important is that you feel deeply relaxed, both physically and mentally. And when you experience that, by the time you count one, we call that the basic plane level. All right. Once you do that, we're going to deepen further with a 10 to 1 countdown. As I count from 10 to 1, allow yourself to feel like you're going deeper within, deeper in thought, as if in an elevator going from the 10th floor all the way down to the first floor. Feel that sinking sensation, that sensation of going within. Anything, anything that you imagine is going to be helpful for you to deepen. You're then going to do another part-by-part -part body relaxation from your eyelids all the way down to your feet by taking a deep breath and relaxing your eyelids. And then I'm going to ask you to feel how relaxed they are. And as you do that, you slowly allow that feeling of relaxation to flow slowly downward throughout your body all the way down to your toe. This will be another deepening that you will be going through. You will go through yet another deepening by projecting yourself to your favorite place of relaxation. When I ask you to do that, go to a real place. I want you to experience fully and completely in as realistic a way as possible a favorite place of relaxation that actually exists. For me, it's my bed at home. So every time I get to this part of the exercise, I project myself as if I'm in my bed at home. And I know how wonderful it is to be in my bed at home. I know how the covers feel. I know how my mattress feels. I know how my pillows feel or how I can adjust the intensity of light in my room with curtains open or curtains closed. It is a memory that I can recall and experience fully and completely. So I'm asking you to do that as well. Experience a real place that you go to where you find yourself relaxing or being able to relax fully and completely and imagine as if you're actually there. This is a place that you know for a fact actually exists the way it does. Concentrate on the feeling that you know that this is true, the feeling of knowing. I'm going to be quiet for a few moments, and then when I start talking to you, you'll just take a deep breath, relax, and continue going on with me. You're then going to go through some affirmations and some positive statements, and then finally a brain out. Now, the exercise, as I mentioned, lasts about 30 minutes, and you will hear a sound in the background. It's called the relaxation sound. The relaxation sound is a sound that my father put together many, many years ago, back in the early 70s, and he experimented with many sounds that he believed could help a person to deepen during their meditative experience. And this sound is the one that most people 
enjoyed the most. And I hope you enjoy it too. Just listen to it in the background. You'll notice that it starts off a little bit rapid and throughout the exercise, it'll begin to slow down and it will slow down even further until at the end of the exercise, you'll have a sort of clanking sound. And people really, really enjoy this exercise. And I think you will too. It's always a great idea to first listen to the exercise with your eyes open before you actually do it with your eyes closed. This way, you'll know exactly what you're going to hear. As with all of the Silva exercises, you always listen to them in a safe environment and never, never while driving or operating heavy machinery. It is always best to listen to the exercise when you know that you have at least 30 minutes of uninterrupted time. This is the best way that you can make the most out of this exercise. Now, this exercise has many, many benefits to it that have been scientifically proven. You will be able to manage your stress effectively. You'll be able to relax at will more easily and readily. You'll be able to strengthen your immune system. You'll have better mind-body management. You'll have better and greater control of your mind. And you'll be able to get overall sense of well-being. You may practice this exercise once a day, once every other day, once a week, but no less than once a week. It is a great exercise not only to teach you meditation, but to enhance your meditative experience. When people do the meditations, especially the long relax, they often ask, how do I know I'm at alpha? How do I know that I'm really at the right frequency of brain for the best results? The question is normal, and the simple answer is that you will know by the results that you obtain. It's really very easy to enter Alpha. Just close your eyes and relax your body, and you're probably there already. But it's not easy to carry an electroencephalograph with you everywhere you go to measure your brainwave frequency. So depend on your results. Do you feel more calm and in control, more relaxed? Do you feel that you're more in charge of your living experience? What you experience during the long relax exercise may be even deeper than alpha. The main thing to do is to establish subjective points of reference with your experience so that you duplicate and enhance your experience through time. When you're able to use your mind to relax your body, You are well on your way. Notice that we don't use any physical means at all to bring about the relaxation of your body. Only your mind. No machines, no drugs, no tensing and relaxing of your muscles. Only your mind. Let's begin. We will begin this exercise with the 3 to one method. Find a comfortable sitting position. Close your eyelids. Take a deep breath. And while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number three, three times. Level three is for physical relaxation, to learn to relax from head to toe in a matter of seconds. To help you learn to relax physically at level three, I'm going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your scalp. The skin that covers your head. you will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation, caused by the energy of life itself. Now release and relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper 
and deeper as we continue. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your forehead. The skin that covers your forehead. You will detect a fine vibration. A tingling sensation. A feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Caused by the energy of life itself. Now release and relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper and deeper as we continue. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your eyelids and the tissue surrounding your eyes. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by the energy of life. Now release and relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper and deeper as we continue. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your face. The skin covering your cheeks. You will detect a fine vibration a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by the energy of life. Now release and relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper and deeper as we continue. Concentrate on the outer portion of your throat, the skin covering your throat area. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by the energy of life, caused by circulation. Now release and relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your body and place this area in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper and deeper as we continue. Concentrate within the throat area. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your shoulders, arms and hands. Feel your clothing in contact with your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your shoulders, arms, and hands. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your shoulders, arms, and hands in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your back.
Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and produce a state of relaxation in this part of your body from your neck to the end of your spine. Concentrate on your chest. Feel your clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your chest. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your chest in a deep state of relaxation going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate within the chest area. Relax all organs. Relax all glands. Relax all tissues, including the cells themselves, and cause them to function in a rhythmic, healthy manner. Concentrate on your abdomen. Feel the clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your abdomen. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your abdomen in a deep state of relaxation going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate within the abdominal area. Relax all organs. Relax all glands. Relax all tissues, including the cells themselves, and cause them to function in a rhythmic, healthy manner. Concentrate on the hips and pelvic area. Release all tensions and ligament pressures and produce a healthy state of relaxation in this part of your body. Imagine all your organs, glands, tissues and cells functioning in a healthy, rhythmic manner. Concentrate on your thighs. Feel your clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your thighs. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your thighs in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time.
Sense the vibrations at the bones within the thighs. By now, these vibrations are easily detectable. Concentrate on your knees. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your knees. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your knees in a deep state of relaxation going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your calves. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your calves. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place these parts of your body in a deep state of relaxation going deeper and deeper every time. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on your toes. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on the soles of your feet. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on the heels of your feet. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. Now cause your feet to feel as though they do not belong to your body. Feel your feet as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet feel as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet, ankles, calves, and knees feel as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet, ankles, calves, Knees, thighs, waist, chest, shoulders, arms and hands feel as though they do not belong to your body. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Allow your body, brain, and mind to memorize this wonderful feeling of deep physical relaxation. Do that now. Notice your slow, rhythmic breathing. Notice how relaxed 
all of your muscles are. Whenever you desire to enter this physical relaxation level three, mentally repeat and visualize the number three several times. Your body will relax as completely as you are now and more so every time you practice. Take another deep breath and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two several times. And you are at level two, a deeper level than three. Level two is for mental relaxation, where noises will not distract you. Instead, Noises will help you to relax mentally more and more. They help you learn to relax mentally at level two. I am going to call your attention to different relaxing scenes. Experiencing any scene that makes you feel tranquil and passive helps you relax mentally. Experience these scenes in a holographic, three-dimensional manner. Imagine yourself being near water on a nice summer day, feeling the warm sun, a gentle breeze, the sound of waves, Experience it fully and completely as if you are there in a holographic, three-dimensional manner. Experience deep gratitude for enjoying this tranquil and passive scene so fully and completely. Use all of your sensing faculties to experience this scene as tranquil and passive. Another tranquil and relaxing scene for you may be swinging on a hammock. Beautiful afternoon when the temperature is perfect. Imagine yourself swinging on a hammock fully and completely as if you are there. What sounds do you hear? What fragrances do you smell? How does swinging on a hammock make you feel? What pleasant memories come to you? Another tranquil and relaxing scene for you may be a walk on a beautiful day when the breeze is just right where there are tall shade trees, beautiful flowers. 
a very blue sky. Occasional white clouds and birds singing in the distance. Hear birds singing in the distance. This is mental relaxation level two, where noises will not distract you. To enhance mental relaxation at level two, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes. To enter the basic plane level, take another deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one several times. You are now at level one, the basic plane level, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. The best time to practice meditation exercises is in the morning when you wake up. Remain in bed at least five minutes practicing. The second best time to practice is at night when you are ready to retire. The third best time to practice is at noon, after lunch. Five minutes of practice is good. Ten minutes is very good. And fifteen minutes is excellent. To practice once a day is good. Two times a day is very good. And three times a day is excellent. If you have a health condition that you are concerned about, practice for 15 minutes three times a day. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I'm going to count from 10 to 1. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper, and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. Ten. Nine. Feel going deeper. Eight. Seven. Six. Deeper and deeper. Five, four, three, deeper and deeper, two, one. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. You may enter a deeper, healthier level of mind by simply relaxing your eyelids. Relax your eyelids. A slight smile helps to relax your eyelids and the muscles of your face. Feel how relaxed they are. Allow this feeling of relaxation to flow slowly downward throughout your body, all the way down to your toes. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. 
To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I'm going to count from one to three and cause a sound with my fingers. At that moment, you will project yourself to your ideal place of relaxation. I will then stop talking to you, and when you next hear my voice, you will take a deep breath, relax, and go deeper. One, two, three. Project yourself mentally to your ideal place of relaxation until you hear my voice again. Relax. Relax. Take a deep breath, and as you exhale, relax and go deeper. The difference between genius mentality and lay mentality is that geniuses use more of their minds and use them in a special manner. You are now learning to use more of your mind and to use it in a special manner. The following are beneficial statements that you may occasionally repeat while at these levels of the mind. Repeat mentally after me. My increasing mental faculties are for serving humanity better. Every day, in every way, I am getting better, better, and better. Positive thoughts, suggestions, and images bring me benefits and advantages I desire. I have full control and complete dominion over my sensing faculties at all levels of the mind. I will always maintain a perfectly healthy body, mind, and immune system. Effective Sensory Projection Statements for Success I am now able to attune my intelligence by developing my sensing faculties and to experience myself as any point, place, level, or depth so as to be aware of any actions taking place. I am able to function in non-locality regarding time and space. I am aware that intelligence exists at all levels and depths in the universe, and therefore I can attune to all information. I am now able to use my sensing faculties and to experience myself as any matter kingdom, mineral, plant, animal, and human, if this is what I desire to do. I am now able to detect abnormalities whenever such abnormalities exist within any kingdom any level.
I am now able to apply corrective measures and to bring back to normalcy. Any abnormality found within any kingdom, any level, and any depth. Energy is available at any level to be acted upon to create through the subjective and objective dimensions. Every time you function at these levels of the mind, you will receive beneficial effects physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help yourself, to help your loved ones, and to help any human being who needs help, physically and mentally. You will always use these levels of the mind in a constructive, creative manner for all that is beneficial and positive, and this is so. You will continue to take part in constructive and creative activities to make this a better world to live in, so that when you move on, you will have left behind a better world for those who follow. You will consider the whole of humanity depending on their ages, as fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters, sons or daughters. You are a superior human being. You have greater understanding, compassion, and patience with others. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to five and cause a sound with my fingers. At that moment, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. One, two, coming out slowly now, Three, at the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before, feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, healthy sleep. Four, five. Eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. To guarantee success with your Silva techniques, we recommend that you take the Silva Seminars live. For more information over course schedules and locations, log on to silvamethod.com or call 1-800-545-6463 within the continental United States or 956-722-6391. I may have mentioned earlier, the Silva Intuition Training Program deals with a lot of concepts. And it's just that, concepts. Concepts that through the years, through research my father did, through the studies that my father conducted, resonated with his beliefs, his experience, and what eventually became the Silva Method in its totality. And these concepts, although may not be always validated scientifically, 
are still valuable to help form our beliefs about what is, what may be, what's to come, and how to guide our living experience, how to make the most of our living experience. One of the concepts my father evolved was that of the Delta Doorway. I want to have Ken talk to you a little bit more about the Delta Doorway. Thank you, Laura. I'd like to share with you a fascinating concept of Jose Silva's. It's called the Delta Door. And you'll be using the Delta Door concept to expand your spiritual awareness and also to further develop applications of one of the techniques you'll be learning shortly, holoviewing. What we mean by the Delta Door, let's revisit the scale of brain evolution. This is a chart we use in our classes that's an illustration of the brain and its development and also the interpretation of what this development means in our lives. So for example, one of the fastest, most energetic frequencies is called beta. Now I say it that way because in the more recent years, science has also noted that they're even faster than beta, but they now call the gamma frequencies of brain. But working with this on a more simple scale, we know delta to represent between around 14 to 21 cycles per second, or hertz, and can be certainly much, much faster than that. And what we know through the brain research is that when the brain is dominantly producing what's called beta, brainwave activity, it's usually associated with our normal waking state, when we're awake, alert, using our five senses to perceive, seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, smelling. Psychologically speaking, this is often be referred to as an outer conscious state of mind. Just below that would be alpha, 7 to 14 cycles per second, or hertz, or can be 8 to 12, depending who you read. And alpha is typically light sleep, daydreaming, rapid eye movement. Psychologically speaking, alpha has been associated, along with theta, the so-called subconscious dimension. And again, you may remember that Jose Silva felt the subconscious implies dark, deep, hidden, mysterious. And it really isn't that at all. It's just a different dimension of thought that we have less experience with, less practice with, less conscious awareness of. So he renamed it to an inner conscious state. Just below that would be theta, or slow wave sleep, can be between four to seven cycles per second. And of course, the slowest delta from 0.5 to four cycles per second. Well, it's interesting to note that over the years, in sleep and dream research, scientists have observed that while in the last phases of pregnancy, while still in the womb, the developing fetus when you monitor its brainwave activity, and they have done this, the dominant brainwave activity is delta. Although all the brainwave patterns are present, delta would be the dominant, the most active. And this continues on through birth and into infancy. Some years ago they were saying up to the first year of life. Now I've heard some suggest that in the first three months of life, the primary dominant brainwave activity is delta. Delta represents a seemingly unconscious state. It's called that because there's a big question mark still. There's still a great deal more research needed because in sleep and dream research, when one is awakened from Delta, first, it's very difficult, and second, when they do, there's little or no recall of what they were doing other than sleeping. So there doesn't seem to be conscious awareness of what's going on, if anything, in our thoughts, in our mind, in our spiritual awareness while in that state. If we further the development and follow and trace it, you'll notice that after about one year, let's say, be safe, let's keep it simple, after about one year of life, the dominant brain of activity is more and more delta and theta. And then, and in the other stages of life, begins to be more delta, theta, and leaning more toward alpha. And we see this in early adolescence. And it's not until the beginnings of puberty where we begin to notice more and more beta activity. So what does this tell us? 
Well, it tells us, keeping it simple, that this is part of our normal physiological development of the brain. If we compare that to the development, psychologically speaking, if we compare that to the development of stages of life, you notice that again that there are certain distinct things that are happening, that are transpiring in the development from our earliest beginnings until adulthood. Well, another interesting aspect is as we grow and mature, and at frankly any age of our life, the observation is that when one is in those final stages about to move on to pass away due to illness or whatever, or old age, whatever it might be, dominant activity returns to delta. It's interesting to note that also about one-third of our life is spent sleeping. And science has pondered what, if anything, could be the significance of this. So here's Jose's concept. Knowing what we know, that when we are born into the world, it's as if we come into the world through the expression of life called delta with respect to the brain. And everything that relates to in terms of our consciousness and our levels of awareness. And when we leave the planet, we again move through this same portal, delta. It is the last frequency to be detected in those last and final phases of life. But well, if we compare that also to our sleep cycles, we know that all throughout the night while we're sleeping, fluctuating throughout the different cycles of sleep, we pass from the very low stages of sleep to the lighter stages of alpha. So Jose's concept very simply, it appears to be significant, spiritually speaking, that Delta represents a portal, if you will, a doorway to a dimension of mind that we're still needing to understand. Later, you will learn how to use this with the Holoviewing technique, a phenomenal technique to gain insight, to attract and manifest synchronicities, so-called coincidences, guidance from source energy. So very simply put, our concept is that the Delta Door represents a portal to that part of us that we're just beginning to understand. That is a fascinating concept and one that is very mind expanding as well. And I think what I find most fascinating about the Delta Doorway is that several times during the night as we sleep, and night after night, we come so close to where we came from, the other side, the other dimension, from nothingness before we even manifested as physical beings. In fact, we come so close to that dimension from where all things come. Ideas, solutions to problems, cures to all illnesses, everything that exists in this dimension came from that other side. And it seems as if that other side that is still part of who we are today as spirit beings having a human experience is source, source of everything that exists. It's source energy. And what we are still lacking on this dimension is still on that side. How do we draw that in? One thing is to think about the Delta doorway, but what good does that do us if we don't apply it towards anything? So a good way to use this concept is to be able to consciously have an understanding and a relationship with that other side, where we can, through our desire and our need, access information or tap into information, into ideas, into solutions that can help better our living experience and the living experience of those who are closest to us. And as we do that through time, as we have this constant connection with that source energy and do this through time, then we can certainly better the quality of our living experience and make this a better world in which to live. Nancy Dannison, in her book Backwards, Returning to Our Source for Answers, says that we are literally part of source in the same way a droplet of salt water on the beach is part of the ocean. Once a small bit of salty water separates from the ocean, we call it a drop of water instead of ocean. Yet, it is still part of the ocean with the exact same characteristics. Its composition is hydrogen, 
oxygen, chlorine, and other ocean chemicals. It still tastes salty like the ocean water. The water's drop's location on the beach does not change its nature either. In much the same manner, we are small local droplets of one consciousness, one sentient intelligence that is eternal, universal, and omnipotent, the being we call God, being we call Source. We feel like separate beings, but are in fact parts of God Source's energy field. So is everything else in our universe, a being's or thing's physical location within the universe does not change its innate nature. All matter, collectively, constitutes source in the same way that all of the droplets of salty water collectively make up the ocean. The only difference between a droplet of salty water and the Atlantic Ocean is volume, and therefore power. Similarly, the only difference between the source and each of us is the amount of energy, and therefore power. We have our tiny little bits of energy are qualitatively the same, but quantitatively less powerful. Your droplet of source energy is a spiritual you that resides in the spiritual subjective dimension. The other aspect of you, that part of you that you can have a constant connection with if you just simply bring it to your conscious mind. And you may have access to through the Delta Doorway. And that is your connection to universal source energy. And that connection helps you in solving problems of all kinds. While in this human experience, we have the ability and freedom to function in both the physical and the spiritual dimensions. The physical dimension is restricted to time and space, and the spiritual dimension has no boundaries of any kind and is all-inclusive. It is not only important but necessary for you to know from deep within that you as a spirit being, having full access to all information and experience, are in constant contact with source energy from where all things come and that you are one with all. Your intelligence, your mind's ability to expand, is able to access and experience that spiritual dimension. To sense your direct connection to source energy, your intelligence through mind's ability to expand is able to access and experience that spiritual dimension. Kent's going to talk to you some more about the following exercise. Thank you, Laura. The next exercise you're about to experience, Droplet of Source Energy, has some profound implications that I trust you'll enjoy and find heartwarming. Perhaps you've heard Dr. Wayne Dyer say, we are spirit beings having a human experience and not the other way around. I couldn't agree more. And in fact, if Jose was with us now, he too would agree. And I know that sometimes it's hard to believe that we truly are here for a purpose, a reason, with a mission. We are spiritual beings. And part of our mission is to manifest more of who we are, to manifest the divine, if you will. Well, this droplet of source energy exercise, you could say, is our acknowledgement that we are more than what we appear to be. It is certainly an admission on our part that somehow, some way, each of us, you, me, our family, friends, are all part of the same substance. You know, recently I was listening to Greg Braden give a very interesting presentation at a teleconference. And he suggested that, based on his research, that over the past 
two years, science has come to agree several facts. And one is that there is an underlying field of energy that connects us all. And that our thoughts, emotions, affects the field. Well, if you've been through the Silver Life System training, you certainly have come to realize that, how our thoughts, emotions, and feelings influence who we are, influence our performance, influence what we can do or not do, and the quality of our life. Well, now from a bit more of a spiritual perspective, when we look at this underlying field, he said that some of the facts that science is considering is that the universe has a shared field of energy and that everything in the universe is connected somehow, some way. Now again, I know this is a very complex topic and I make no claims. So let's see if we can simply put our minds, put our hearts together and consider some of the common denominators of expression here. Some of it may be even common sense. For throughout the ages, even various religions have said similar things proponents of higher consciousness, including certainly those religions, have claimed that we are each components of universal source energy and one with it. I mentioned earlier Jose Silva. He was a great believer that if you're on mission and you stay connected to source and you stay on mission, on purpose in your life, that wonderful things happen, synchronicities, so-called coincidences that will guide you for example, a famous story in early in Jose's development of his work. He was very disillusioned by what he was reading in psychology. It seemed to be that many different psychologists were contradicting each other. The Catholic Church was not happy with his work. His wife and family were not happy with his work. That's at first. It was a really tough time for the man. And here he is in a moment of exasperation, of frustration. People began to stop coming to his business. He had this huge electronics business that he had built up. He was quite an inventor, by the way. All this confused him. He goes to bed feeling dismayed, disillusioned, ready to give up and go back to just repairing TVs and working on radios. And sure enough, he has a dream. And in that dream, he sees a series of two numbers flashing on his mental screen. And then there were a whole series of coincidences. He wakes up in the morning recalling the dream, putting it aside as just one of those things. Well, the coincidence was, so-called coincidence, I might add, a friend came to visit, wanted to spend time, have a cup of coffee together. Jose had promised his wife, Paula, that he was going to go over the border into Mexico to buy alcohol that they use for medicinal purposes. And apparently back then you could bring it across the border duty-free if you broke camphor into it because you're going to use it for medicinal purposes. Well, anyway, as I sat in line waiting to get across the border, he told his friend about his dream, told his friend about his exasperation. And his friend was convinced that was a sign, an insight. Jose at first wouldn't hear of it. Well, they traveled to the store where typically Jose would go to get you know, his purchase, and the store was closed. So he found himself traveling to another part of the city that he rarely went to, to a store that he had never made any purchases from. When his friend was walking around curiously and came upon a table with lottery tickets for sale. And in the Mexican lottery at that time, they would start with a prefix, a series of three numbers, and then be grouped into groups of 10 or 20 and there'd be various series. Each city in Mexico would get a specific prefix series of numbers. Well, lo and behold, there it was, 343. Three. And the friend said, oh my God, this is a sign. These are Jose's numbers. He bought the remaining tickets. I believe there were 10, as, as I remember the story. Showed Jose, who wanted nothing to do with it, thought it was too close for coincidence, too much of a stretch. And the friend literally asked him to make a promise that if he won, he would take it as a sign to continue his work. Well, if you know the story, sure enough, he won the equivalent of thousands of dollars. 
And as Jose would say if he were here, oh boy, it was like getting a kick in the butt. The other series of numbers, later they found out, only available in Mexico City, won the equivalent of many, many, many more thousands. I could go on and on with stories like that. And perhaps you too have had some experiences along those lines that often, when all else has seemingly failed, or when we're feeling disillusioned or discouraged, if we stay in integrity, true to our purpose, true to our core values, that somehow, some way, we gain insight to guide us. And this is the relevance of the source energy exercise, that we want to establish a conscious connection, to move from being unconsciously competent, you know, automatic, kind of happens to consciously understanding and sustaining this connection at a conscious level so that we can solve more problems, gain more insights, create more solutions, and maintain this spiritual connection. You know, I find it interesting, this topic, because it leaves so much room for speculation that even in science there's been a great deal of discussion lately about the Schumann Resonance. You know, it's a field of energy that we notice that, for example, in the same way that the human body generates an electromagnetic field, so too does everything on this planet that exists have a measurable electromagnetic field, an EMF. In fact, the entire planet has a field of energy. It's been detected and measured. And it goes even beyond the Earth's atmosphere, about 300 miles. There are modern magnometers, they call them, that are specialized devices that can pick up this field of energy. Well, we're not able to yet measure throughout the universe, or even our solar system for that matter, or our galaxy, but it's speculated by this group of scientists that this field of energy extends throughout the entire, not just our solar system, but the entire galaxy and universe. So if we go back to Greg Braden's ideas that there's an underlying field of energy that connects us all and that it's non-local. It's not limited by time or space. Our objective senses are, you know that. But subjectively, when it comes to the imagination, it's limitless. We have infinite possibilities. Our intention with the droplet of source energy is to establish that connection. If you've been through the Silver Life System, and if you haven't, you'll want to do it. The Silver Life System, we developed something called the Counselors. And the Counselors at first were developed during a caseworking session between Jose Silva and his daughter, a young, a very young Isabel, who felt frightened. And he developed this as a technique, a resource, to help her overcome her fear, to be more at home, to feel more comfortable, to feel more secure. And yet, over the ages and over the years since those early, early years, the counselors have become more of a personification of one's own intelligence and even a tool to facilitate the flow of information, solutions, and ideas. The droplet of source energy is basically your acknowledgement that you are connected to and one with universal source energy. And in that, it has a very different purpose than that of your counselors. So you're going to experience an exercise to help you connect and establish a connection with source energy. And then later, in a later exercise, we're going to integrate that with the technique called holoviewing that you can use to manifest more of what you want to gain insights. I'd like to give you a couple of examples. When we talk about source energy, for example, look at inventors. Elias Howe, for example, he's working on the sewing machine, which had been invented already. But they were having difficulty. It wasn't working properly. And you may remember, it's a famous story. He has a dream, and in the dream he's captured. He's being prodded by what you might have thought were spears by the local natives. Turns out they look like sewing machine needles. And he remembered being startled in the dream, waking up because he screamed out, Stop! You got it wrong! For they were using the motion and movement of those earliest devices, but they had the hole on the opposite end. 
and it wasn't a spear, but in his dream he saw them holding sewing machine needles. He woke up frightened at first, startled at first, and then bingo, he had an insight. So that's it, put the hole on the opposite end. That one little dream, that one little insight, now led him to be credited with the sewing machine, working properly. A simple example, just recently I returned from Copenhagen where I was conducting a lecturer or instructor training and development for some of our European silver instructors. And I was leaving my hotel room to go downstairs to be picked up to ride to the center where we were doing the training. I left my room and I had this just nagging feeling to go back, like I had left something there. I had already moved and my room was quite a distance from where I had traveled to now the stairwell, but I went back. Sure enough, I go back only to find my door had not locked and it was left open. And I had quite a few valuables there, right there in the room. Can you think of a time like that yourself? It is my opinion that when we maintain a conscious connection to source energy, it's as if we become luckier. We make less mistakes. We become more aware of things, whether it be danger or a situation like I just described. Or we begin to attract people, places, situations that help us to fulfill our goals. Just earlier today, I was on the phone with a coach client in one of my coaching sessions. She's a silver grad developing a new business. And one of her goals was to participate in a very, very large trade show in the Chicago area. Essential for her business. But she lacked the resources, the finances, the preparation. Well, long story being short, she's using some of these techniques that you're going to learn. And voila, she attracts a new client, someone interested in her product. And in fact, someone who's participating in that show and wants to feature her and her product, her service. So here she is, not having to invest a single penny and yet able to get a presence in a show that will put her on the map for her business. Thank you, Kenny. How about you? Can you think of stories that sound similar to that? How many times have you had experiences where something special happened, where things evolved or manifested out of seemingly nowhere, where you felt that something special was going on within as well as without, and that there was a connection with both experiences, the internal experience as well as the external experience, and one couldn't happen without the other? that you were truly living as a spirit being having a human experience. We're now going to go through an exercise that incorporates the concept of the expanding mind. You will begin the exercise with a 3 to 1 method, followed by a 10 to 1 countdown. You will experience yourself in the here and now, experiencing your body in time and space experiencing all organic systems, and I will name one system after the other so that you can acknowledge these systems within you, the systems that make up your human body. I will then guide you to observe that you are a result of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions, feeling that there is universal source energy guiding your life, observing that all of your systems are formed by cells. And all you can observe now is a you that is a body of cells. Use your imagination during this exercise to do just that. If you could not see anything or experience anything, anything else but cells, how would your body look different? I'll ask you to experience yourself as a molecular body after that. So if all that you could experience and observe were just molecules, how would your body be different as a molecular body versus a cellular body versus a body made up of systems? The same thing about observing yourself as purely atomic in nature. What would be the difference that makes the difference between you as an atomic body, or you as a molecular body, or you as a cellular body. 
and we will continue to make special observations of the you that is comprised of pure subatomic particles. Again, what is the difference that makes a difference? What's important to do in all of the exercises in the Silva Intuition Training Program is to begin to make distinctions between one thing and the other, one experience and the other, one observation and the other, one feeling and the other. Distinctions, 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 comparisons, comparisons, comparisons. We are going to be very, very good at noticing the difference that makes the difference in our internal experience as we go through all of the exercises. In fact, we started with the long relaxation in the last CD. So we'll continue with making these observations, these distinctions, these subjective points of reference. After all, one of the main course goals is that of subjective education, to educate ourselves in how we discern information sensed through our subjective or mental senses. In order to be able to function as effectively in the subjective dimension, if not more so, as we do in the physical dimension, remember that there are no boundaries of time or space in the subjective dimension, so we have access to all information. What's lacking is our ability to interpret the information that we sense. And that's why this type of training is so important. We will continue expanding our mind, expanding our consciousness to experience our energy body with no boundaries whatsoever, experiencing that you are an energy being expanding your consciousness, expanding your awareness further still so that you are one with the room that you're in, the building, one with the city, the country, one with the continent, our planet, the solar system, you as being one with the galaxy. You and the galaxy are inseparable. At that level, at the level of pure energy, you and the galaxy are one and the same. You and the universe, one and the same. Expand your consciousness, expand your awareness, expand your mind to fill the entirety of the universe and feel yourself as one with the universe feeling that there is no such thing as far or near, no up, no down, no yesterday, no tomorrow. All is present. Everything is now. You know all. Your source energy is within you, and you are one with source energy. All history is in you. Nothing in the universe is separate. At this point in time, you create a concept or symbol of the droplet of source energy that is within you. In your mind, in your awareness, in your consciousness, although you are one with the universe, you still have that awareness of the encapsulated you that resides on planet Earth. That within that encapsulated you is that droplet of source energy. Represent that droplet of source energy in some form or fashion. It could be a symbol, a shape, a color. It could be an image of some kind. Anything that comes to mind, anything that comes to you at that point in time during the exercise, when I ask you to represent source energy or that droplet of source energy within you, will be valid for you. Allow this droplet within you to take a form that you resonate with. Allow your personal drop of source energy to express itself in any way that is most appropriate for you. Your symbol will become 
your constant connection to all of whom you are at this universal infiniteness. Experience then your symbol's immense power, energy, love, wisdom, and abundance, and thank the droplet of source energy within you for being one with you throughout your living experience. You will then express deep gratitude to your source energy for coming so clearly into your awareness. And at that point in time, you reach out to embrace your symbol and bring it towards you into the area of your heart and allow it to come into you and fill you completely. From then on, whenever you have a need or desire, To connect with source energy, simply bring to mind that symbol, that representation that is within you always. Let's get ready for the exercise. We will begin this exercise with the 3 to 1 method. Find a comfortable position. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number three, three times. To help you learn to relax physically at level three, I'm going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes and the tissue surrounding your eyes. Relax your face. A slight smile always helps to relax the muscles of your face. Relax your throat, externally and internally, as well as your neck area. Relax your shoulders, arms, and hands. Take a deep breath, and as you exhale, relax your chest, externally and internally. Take a nice deep belly breath and as you exhale, relax your abdominal area externally and internally. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet all the way down to your toes. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Whenever you desire to enter this physical relaxation level three, mentally repeat and visualize the number three several times and you will be at level three. 
your body will relax as completely as you are now, and more so every time you practice. To enter the mental relaxation level 2, mentally repeat and visualize the number 2 several times. Level 2 is for mental relaxation, where noises will not distract you. Instead, noises help you to relax mentally more and more. To improve mental relaxation at level 2, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes. Do it now. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, level one, take a deep breath and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one several times. You are now at level one, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I'm going to count from 10 to 1. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper, and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. 10, 9, feel going deeper, 8, Seven, six, deeper and deeper, five, four, three, deeper and deeper, two, one. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. At this very relaxed state, feel your body as it exists in time and space. You are here at this very moment. Be conscious, be mindful of the here and now and relax. Now focus your attention on your body. Feel your skin covering your body. Feel the vibration of the skin covering your body. Observe the fact that your body consists of systems. That you have many systems within you that make up who you are as a human body. The digestive system. The circulatory system. The respiratory system, the reproductive system, the muscular system, the skeletal system, the cardiovascular system. the nervous system. Become aware 
that you are multidimensional and that you are also formed by your emotions, thoughts, and the feelings, and that all of whom you are is guided by a universal source energy that also guides your life. Observe the fact that all of who you are as a human being with emotions, thoughts, and feelings is formed by cells. You are a gigantic map of cells. Experience your cells vibrant and alive. If all you could detect were your cells, what would they look like? How would you appear? Observe that the cells are formed by molecules. You are molecular. Imagine yourself as a molecular being. Observing yourself as a molecular being, how do you look differently? How is your being different? How is your experience of yourself? Observe that the molecular you is formed by atoms. Observe yourself as atomic in nature. Observe that atoms are formed by particles. There's great space between particles. Observe the you that is particle in nature. What is now so different about you at this dimension? Experience the space. Observe that particles are formed by energy. Observe the you that is energy. You are energy. You are an energy being guided by a spirit of intelligence that governs your life and your being, your very existence. At this energy level, there are no boundaries that separate you from anyone or anything else that exists. There is only space. In that space, you are one with all, and all is you. Expand your awareness of you to incorporate the entire room. At this energy level, you are one with the room and everything inside the room. There are no boundaries, only space. Expand your awareness further to now be one with the building. You are the building. And everything in this building is you.
Now expand your awareness to the city. You are the city and the city is you. Expand your awareness further to be one with the state. Everything is you. You are one with everything. To the country. The planet. You are Earth. Earth is you. Continue to expand your awareness of your being to the solar system. You are the solar system. Experience yourself as the solar system. And the solar system is you. Expand farther out to the galaxy. You are the galaxy. The galaxy is you. And now, the universe. Feel your presence throughout the entire universe. The universe is you, and you are the universe. There is no one thing that is far or near. There is no such thing as up or down. There is no yesterday, no tomorrow. Everything is now. You know all. You are intelligent. You are timeless. You are eternal. You are infinite. Nothing in the universe is separate you are all. You are. While experiencing this magnificent sense of being one with Source, as if an immense ocean whose droplets constantly give rise to all forms in the universe, Remember that there is a droplet of this ocean of source energy that resides within you. Yet, the droplet within you is still a part of the ocean with the exact same characteristics. How you have manifested does not change your nature. You are a small droplet of this one consciousness, one sentient intelligence that is eternal, universal, and omnipotent. All matter in the universe collectively constitutes source energy in the same way that all of the droplets of salty water collectively make up the ocean. Allow this droplet within you to represent itself, to take a form you resonate with. Allow your personal drop of source energy to express itself in any way that is most appropriate for you. Allow a symbol or representation to express itself, to show itself to you. Take your time. Your personal representation of source energy, your symbol, 
is your constant connection to all of whom you are as this universal infiniteness. Experience your symbol's immense power, energy, love, wisdom, and abundance. And thank the droplet of source energy within you for being one with you throughout your human living experience. Express deep gratitude to your source energy for coming so clearly into your awareness now. Now extend your arms outward to embrace your symbol of source energy and bring it towards you closer and closer into the area of your heart. Allow it to enter you and fill you completely. Experiencing source energy within you fully and completely. Now let us take the journey back to Earth, allowing yourself to become attuned with the galaxy the galaxy your human body resides in. You are the galaxy. The galaxy is you. Allow your awareness to attune itself to you, the solar system. The solar system your human body resides in. You are the solar system. The solar system is you. Now you, Earth. Now you, the country. Now you, the state. City. You, this room. Allow your awareness to become mindful of you sitting on the chair. Feel and know that while you are the universe and the universe is you, you are also the encapsulated self filled with a droplet of source energy sitting in the chair. You are a multidimensional being. Know that while in this human form, your droplet of source energy will be ever present to help you in solving problems in creating ideas and solutions, allowing you to make your life and the life of those around you better and better through time, doing your part in turning this planet into a paradise. Every time you function at these levels of the mind, you will receive beneficial effects physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help yourself, to help your loved ones, and to help any human being who needs help physically and mentally. You will always use these levels of the mind in a constructive, creative manner for all that is good, honest, pure, clean and positive, and this is so. You will continue to take part in constructive and creative activities to make this a better world in which to live, so that when you move on, you shall have left behind a better world for those who follow. You will consider the whole of humanity depending on their ages, 
as fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters, sons or daughters. You are a superior human being. You have greater understanding, compassion, and patience with others. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to five and cause a sound with my fingers. At that moment, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. One, two, coming out slowly now, three, at the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before, feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, healthy sleep. Four, five, eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. To guarantee success with your Silva techniques, we recommend that you take the Silva seminars live. For more information over course schedules and locations, log on to silvamethod.com or call 1-800-545-6463 within the continental United States or 956-722-6391.